सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू सेल टू एम डी एस डेंटल अकेडमी आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन सो टूडे देर विल बी द एटीनथ लेक्चर फ्रॉम सेल टू एम डी एस डेंटल अकेडमी दिस लेक्चर इज ऑन क्लिनिकल मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एंडोनोटिक इमरजेंसीज वी हैव थ्री लेक्चर ऑन एंडोनोटिक इमरजेंसीज दैट इज बिफोर द ट्रीटमेंट ड्यूरिंग द ट्रीटमेंट आफ्टर द ट्रीटमेंट यू कैन वॉच दैम आउट सो टूडे वी विल लर्न हाउ टू मैनेज this lecture is very important for my mds aspirants for bds students and for private practitioner also so friends now we know my dear mds aspirants that uh, near about 190 to 200 days are left for neat exam and 165 to 170 days are left for your aims exam so now we have to gear up our preparation okay so i have made one study plan for my dear students but that i will present in the next video so meanwhile those seven days you people also make your blueprint for the coming 6 month it should be not complete blueprint but an idea a path in which you have to walk yeah there will be little variation will be there but you have to make a proper blueprint so why i am telling today this because whenever we make certain blueprint or certain plan there are many hurdles many questions come in our mind so whatever questions are there in your mind you can write in the comment box you can mail me you can whatsapp me so i will address those question in the next lecture and whenever you are making plan write three important things first the subject name second you have to write the combination like you make a combo of certain subjects like you make the combo of uh, dental materials uh, uh, prosthodontic part and your prosthodontic part or you can make the combo of your uh, uh, dental histology and uh, periodontology so like that you can make certain combination so make the, uh, those combo third thing you have to write that how many days or how many hours you are intended to give to that particular chapter how many days you want to give for the mds and mcq preparation and also you have to mention the source from where you read there should be a ready shot material with you for example you want to go for the reading of prosto so you should know from all these two books or three books i have to read the prosto or whatever subject is like that so formulate your own study plan in next week i will discuss uh, my formulated study plan which was based on my experience which i prepared during my mds and also from the various mds aspirants who have cleared neat exam and aims exam so friends be ready with that and whatever doubts you have you can mail me whatsapp me the information is given in the description box also and also on the screen so let's get started with the today's topic that is clinical management of endodontic emergencies <laughs> so today now we will discuss clinical management of endodontic emergencies as we have seen in our previous video the emergencies before the treatment during the treatment and after the treatment so now we should know that how we will manage this emergencies clinically so whatever emergency are there they are associated with two thing pain and swelling so now we'll see how to deal with those things so first the emergencies that present himself with pain so as we know i have explained uh, why pain occur in endodontics there are two reasons for it the first reason is pressure and second is chemical mediators that sensitize your nerve fibers so you can manage the pain by combination of endodontic therapy to relieve pressure and a pharmacotherapy to increase threshold of your pain so there are few guidelines for your analgesic prescription first is always give pre operative anesthetics that will enhance your anesthetic effect the second begin with non narcotic analgesic because nar narcotic analgesic can cause several side effects like a nausea drowsiness and pain only in case of acute emergency you have to go for the combination of narcotic and non narcotic analgesics then dosage guidelines So as we know the paracetamol that's acetaminophen the doses will range from 325 to 1000 mg diclofenac you can give a sodium or a potassium potassium is more potent and effective when you can give within a range of 50 to 100 mg then aspirin 325 to 1000 mg ibuprofen 200 to 800 mg then opioid analgesic codeine the range of 60 mg tramadol the range of 50 mg then we'll see what you have to do when swelling is there the first point you have to note is your local anesthesia consideration second proper excess opening and cmp there is a chemomechanical preparation third is incision and drainage fourth 
supportive antibiotic therapy and fifth and sixth is trephination and decompression so local anesthesia consideration so now patient has come or a thing uh, patient has come with a swell so what first thing we have to do is that we have to treat it we have to go for the endodontic therapy so first step come is a local anesthesia consideration normally the pulp is necrotic so la is not required routinely but in some cases it may require so here your infiltration anesthesia is a contraindicated why because the infiltration cause pain and it help in the spread of infection into the facial planes or a spaces second your la will not be effective in such a cases because of acidic ph in acidic ph the deprotonization of la molecules will not occur so it will not effective as it is effective in case of alkaline ph so you have to go for the conduction or a block anesthesia so whenever you encounter the case of the abscess or like that go for block anesthesia the one thing you can do is test cavity what is a test cavity it help you to know that any remaining vital pulp is there or not to go for uh, la or not so always perform test cavity then second is access opening and cnp as i mentioned in my previous lecture that the word uh, bmb has been obsolete nowadays we follow the word chemo mechanical preparation so first is access opening as you know because of the high speed of our aerator the tooth movement will occur that will cause a pain so whenever you go for the access opening stabilize the tooth that is brace the tooth with finger pressure or impression compound and then after access opening irrigate profus profusely mostly you have to use a saline never use a uh, uh, sodium hypochlorite at this stage because it will cause a clumping of your debris instrument that is go for the preparation of the canal within 1 mm of root apex never go beyond so when you go for the access opening you will see the purulent exudate accepts into the chamber which indicates that your root canal is patent and draining will occur and which provides relief to the patient but in few cases you can see the dry canal mostly due to the apical constriction which prevent your inflammatory products to drain through the pulp chamber so in such cases you have to go for the apical trephination i will explain in the later part of the video what is apical trephination so after this you have to go for the proper placement of intracanal medicament like a calcium hydroxide triple antibiotic paste or ladder mix paste never we go for the open dressing because open dressing will cause a salivary or a bacterial contamination which will impair the prognosis of the tooth so always go for the closed dressing and you can advise the patient to go for warm saline rinses which act as an analgesic and also decrease the inflammatory products along with that you have to prescribe proper analgesic and antibiotics so as i mentioned you have to go for the closed dressing only the advantage are uh, you can prevent bacterial contamination you can prevent contamination with the food debris and which cause blockage of canal sometime and also prevent it prevents the need for unnecessary follow up appointments to close the now if you you see the swelling then how will you manage the swelling whether you go directly for incision drainage no the gutman has described several modalities to treat this swelling because swelling can be localized also or a diffuse also if you see the swelling is slight and localized and there is a no need for ind there is incision and drainage you can advise the patient proper antibiotics along with that warm saline rinses okay then if you found the swelling is fluctuant fluctuant means your swelling is pin pointing then you have to go for the incision and drainage sometimes you found the cases of edema in a cellulitis in those cases you cannot go for ind then you have to go for the proper antibiotic coverage and aggressive removal of any necrotic tissue from your pulp canal system if the swelling is hard indurated non fluctuant then consider antibiotics and advise hot saline rinses so you know i talk talk about the hard swelling so this hard swelling can be converted into a soft fluctuant state by rinsing with warm saline solution 3 to 5 minute at every at a time every hour why because your saline alkalizes your mouth it will act as an astringent and analgesic and also because of heat there will be vasodilation and increase in blood flow and it will also prevent 
the destruction of the cells. So that's why the warm saline solution rinses is very important in case of non-fluctuant swelling. Then culturing the exudate, yeah, it is sometimes required for antibiotic sensitive testing, but never use the initial portion of the exudate. So what all irrigants you can use in treating acute abscess? So I have told never use hypochlorite. It can cause clumping of a debris. You can use a sterile water saline or a chlorhexidine. But yeah, in later stages you can use hypochlorite or your hydrogen peroxide. Now the incision and drainage. So how you will go for the incision and drainage? So remember never go for the wrong incision. That is people have the habit of incising in their non-dependent part of the swelling. Always go for the swelling in the most dependent part. So you can see in the figure the first they go for the swelling in the most dependent part. Swelling should run from the mucosa to the periosteum. Second, this is a blunt dissection you have to do with the help of your uh, any artery forceps or a tissue forceps. So with the help of this blunt dissection, the exudates will release. It will drain out. Then sometime in case of large swelling, it is required to put the drainage like a Penrose drain for a continuous drainage from the cavity. So this is the steps of the incision and drainage. Then why you require IND? I have told you to decrease the number of bacteria, it will reduce tissue pressure, it will prevent the spread of infection and it will also help in the healing of the tissue. Then trephination, there are two types of trephination, apical and surgical trephination. The surgical trephination is also known as cortical trephination. So, how you will do the apical trephination? So, in case of the dry, even after uh, uh, establishing patency of the canal, uh, the exudate is not coming out, then you have to aggressively place your number 8, 10 or 15 file beyond the apical const uh, constriction to initiate the drainage. So, this apical drainage is useful in much many of the cases. Then there are some problems associated with this uh, apical trephination like your uh, natural constriction will destroy sometimes the zipping of the canal can occur in case of cow canals but the benefits of the procedure far outweigh the potential problem so you can go for the apical trephination the second is the cortical trephination that is surgical trephination is rarely indicated it is useful whenever the apical trephination fail and there is a severe pain due to increase in intracortical pressure then you can perform the cortical trephination there are two approaches to perform cortical trephination. The option one is go for proper anesthesia. Then you can use a number 15 scalpel blade to make a small incision horizontally into the mucosa from apical to the root apex. Then you can use a number 6 or 8 round bar to penetrate the cortical plate and to reach the periodical area or a lesion. Please try to avoid your contact with the root apex. The option two which I use to follow and uh, it is one of the safest options because in this there are very minimal chance that your root apex will destroy. So in this, the first step is go for the penetration of cortical plate with the help of number 6 or 8 round bar. Then you can use a large K file around uh, number 40 to create a path to the cancellous bone to your periodicular tissue to create the uh, drainage area. So friends, that was all about the clinical management of endodontic emergencies.